Welcome to Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret. We're in the Gospel of John going verse by verse as usual. We come today to John chapter 8, verse 12. You can study the whole Bible with me anytime you want to, any part of the Bible that you want to. You can go through the Bible with me verse by verse four times at the Bible verse by verse dot com. You can start in Genesis. You can go all the way through Revelation, one verse at a time. Or you can choose any book of the Bible that you want. All you have to do is choose, click, and listen. And all you need to bring is your Bible and everything else is there. Bring your Bible and a hunger for God's Word and you are all set to study the whole counsel of God, just the way God gave it, one verse at a time. And believe me, it's not watered down. Because if the Word of God is not given out clearly enough to upset those who are rebelling, to accept those who may call themselves evangelicals but are lukewarm, if the Word isn't clear enough to upset those people and make them feel very uncomfortable, then it's not going to be clear enough to bless you and feed you if you're one who truly loves Jesus. There's no other reason for me to do this other than to get the Word of God out as clearly, concisely, and straightforwardly as I possibly can, which is what I've been doing for over 34 years here on Scripture Verse by Verse. So again, <clears throat> I invite you to check it out at the Bible, verse by verse dot com. So let's pray. Father, we ask that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, John 8, verse 12. Then spoke Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness but shall have the light of life. Those who are saved and live for the Lord Jesus Christ and walk humbly with him will not live in darkness. They will not live, in other words, in ignorance, which means they will not stumble through this life without a moral compass suffering for their own foolishness and their own sinfulness. Just one of the side benefits of being saved and walking with the Lord and living by the word. <clears throat> Excuse me. You're not going to stumble through life in moral darkness, paying the price for your sin and your foolishness and your unbiblical ways. That's what Jesus is talking about. If you put Christ first, <clears throat> then he will pour out unto you knowledge and holiness and wisdom. So you don't stumble through this life doing all sorts of self-destructive things, things that dishonor God and will make your life a failure. So let's read, <clears throat> excuse me, 12 and 13 together. Then spoke Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. If you follow him, that means you got to be saved and you do what the word of God says, in spite of feelings. The Pharisees therefore said unto him, Thou bearest witness of thyself. Thy witness is not true. They the religious leaders who, of course, hate Jesus, are, they're jealous of him. <clears throat> they think that Jesus is boasting and lying about himself, making these grandiose statements. So they say, we don't have to believe in you. You're just talking smart. 14. Jesus answered and said unto them, Though I bear witness of myself, yet my witness is true, for I know from where I came and where I go, but ye cannot tell from where I come and where I go. 
Jesus is saying, it doesn't matter what you religious leaders think. And it doesn't change reality either. And it doesn't change what is true. What you think doesn't matter, religious leaders. Jesus came from God whether they believe it or not. Jesus is the eternal son of the eternal father, 100% God, whether they believe it or not. Jesus is the eternal judge that will judge each and every one of us, including those religious leaders, whether they believe it or not. And Jesus will return to the Father, whether they believe it or not. What you believe or don't believe does not change reality. It is what it is. If you don't believe the truth of God's word, you're going to suffer for not walking in reality. Why don't you try putting sugar in your gas tank sometime? Go against reality that it is an internal combustion engine that needs gasoline. Just go against reality, put sugar in there instead of gas, and see if it works to go against reality. You're going to end up with, I don't know, a ruined engine, I imagine. You're certainly going to be stranded and probably much worse. It's the same in the spiritual realm. You go against what the Word of God says. I mean, that's up to you. If you want to do that, fine. I'm just telling you the truth. That's what Jesus was doing. doesn't matter what you believe. If you go against the Word of God, you're in trouble. You're going to pay for it. <clears throat> 15. Jesus said, ye judge after the flesh, I judge no man. And of course, modern evangelicals and the lost alike, two peas in a pod, jump on verses like this. I judge no one. See, we're not supposed to judge. <laughs> yeah, we're not supposed to judge all right. That's why God says to his people, have nothing to do with the unfruitful deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. I'd like to know how you're going to avoid getting involved in the unfruitful works of darkness, and I'd like to know how you're going to expose them if you don't judge between right and wrong and call right right and wrong wrong. So don't hand me this garbage that Jesus never judges, and he says that we are never to judge. That's not what he's saying. Ye judge after the flesh, I judge no man. These religious leaders had poor judgment, and it was tainted and twisted by their feelings and their prejudices, and because of that, they were not qualified to judge. Did you hear that? These religious leaders had poor judgment. It was tainted, it was twisted by their feelings and by their prejudices, and that's why they were not qualified to judge. They would not have a righteous judgment. And Jesus doesn't mean that he will never judge anyone when he says, I judge no man. He is talking about this first time that he came. Because the first time that he came was to save, not to condemn. Jesus will judge and condemn when he returns. Now you can shun that part of the Bible out if you want to. But it's there. It's all over the place. Sixteen. And yet, if I judge, my judgment is true, for I am not alone, but I and the Father that sent me. When the time is right for Jesus to judge, he said he will. But it won't be in a superficial way. It won't be tainted by prejudice or by feelings. Nothing that superficial. You know, the best that people can do is make a surface level judgment. And sometimes, sometimes it's not good enough. In fact, it's very unreliable. When it is time for Jesus to judge, He's, it's, his judgment is not going to be surface level. It's not going to be according to what he sees just alone. When it's time for Jesus to judge, he's going to judge actions. He's going to judge words. He's going to judge motives. He's going to judge thoughts. 
He's going to judge the intent of the heart as well as words and actions. That is what, <clears throat> excuse me, that is what is going to make his judgment a righteous judgment. The, the nearest you and I can come to making a righteous judgment is if we judge actions and words, <clears throat> excuse me, by what the Word of God says. And even with that, we're not qualified to say what is somebody's motive. We can judge actions, and we can judge words, and we are commanded to do so. We're just not qualified to make the final judgment and say, well, this is how culpable somebody is for their actions and their words. We know that their actions and words are wrong because they contradict the Scripture. How much guilt they carry for that, that's between them and God. See? That's what it means when God says, don't judge. When he tells us not to judge, it's not. <clears throat> he's not saying, don't make a discernment between right and wrong. He's saying, don't think that you have, that you're the final arbiter on how much guilt each and every person carries for the wrong that they do. That is, that's God's business, not yours, not mine. 17. It is also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. I am one that bear witness of myself, and the Father that sent me beareth witness of me. So, Jesus quotes the law of Moses, which says that every matter must be established by at least two or three witnesses, and he is speaking legally. Jesus says, I'm one witness, and my Father is the other witness. So Jesus is not full of empty boasts, as his enemies are claiming. Jesus testified to the fact that he's the Son of God. So did his works. So did John the Baptist. And so did the Father, out loud from heaven three times in front of people. The father testified that Jesus was his son by the words of the Old Testament writers that spoke of Jesus, by the words of John the Baptist, who was inspired by God. The father testified to the reality of his son by the miracles which he caused Jesus to do, and also by that audible voice that came from heaven three times. Plenty of testimony concerning who Jesus is. If you don't believe that Jesus is the eternal Son of the eternal Father, the only Savior, the only way to heaven, then you are living in the land of make-believe and you're going to die and go to hell. You can be smug and say God is bigger than that or any other kind of supposedly wise statement that the sophisticated people make in this world. You're still going to burn in hell. Because remember what Jesus is telling these guys. It doesn't matter what you believe. It doesn't matter what you so smugly pontificate. You're still going to die and go to hell. Because you can dress up lies, you can dress up falsehood in a fancy garb of sophistication. It's still a lie. It's still a falsehood. You're still going to pay. And if, it regards Jesus, if it's regarding Jesus Christ and the Word of God, you're going to burn in hell. And you're going to remember my words when you are there. Only then it's going to be too late for you to do anything about it. Right now, it's not. You can repent and you can receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior if you want to right now. Then said they unto him, Where is thy father? Jesus answered, Ye neither know me nor my father. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. These religious leaders, amazingly, religious leaders in charge of the spiritual life of God's people. And they didn't know God the Father. And they did not accept God the Father. They didn't know God the Father because they didn't know God the Son. And they didn't accept God the Father because they didn't accept the Son. Jesus said, Jesus said, if anyone has, or the Bible says, if anyone has the Son, they have the Father also. If anybody 
does not have the Son, they do not have the Father also. If you accept the Son, then you will get to know both him and the Father. 20. These words spoke Jesus in the treasury as he taught in the temple, and no man laid hands on him, for his hour was not yet come. The religious rulers, remember, wanted, wanted to arrest Jesus Christ. They wanted to kill him. But they did not, because they could not. And they did not know why they could not. But we know it was because his hour had not yet come. Meaning that God the Father would not allow it yet. And you remember what Jesus said? Don't think of Jesus as a victim because he's not. Even when you see him crucified on the cross, don't think of him as a victim. He's not. He said, no one takes my life. I lay it down of my own free will. He will die on the cross to pay for our sins when it is the Father's time. And when that happens, it'll be the Son's time. And when that happens, they'll let it happen at the hands of wicked men who are accountable for their evil because God will not force them to do it. They'll just do it of their own free will. But God is big enough and smart enough to know how to use their evil, unspeakable evil, to bring about something good, like paying for the sins of those who repent and receive Christ as Lord and Savior. So I'm going to stop right there for today. When you take a break from studying at thebibleversebyverse.com, I invite you to go to the front page, click the Donate button, and prayerfully give to this ministry as the Lord may lead. If you want to be a part of this ministry, you can do it by your financial support and also by your prayers, which I would really appreciate. Pray for me. Pray for God's word. I want those prayers badly. Because this, this is serious business, and I take it very seriously. I know what the Bible says about teachers being judged with a stricter judgment. And believe me, I don't take it lightly. I don't even like to think about it. That's why some people say, Marant, you're so bold. You're so bold, you teach the word of God straight. I'm not bold, I'm a coward. I'm just, I just happen to be afraid of the right person. I'm not afraid of what you think of me. I'm not afraid of losing popularity. I'm afraid of not being faithful to God. Therefore, I teach the truth as clearly as I can. So, again, if you want to be a part of this ministry, pray for me, would you? Pray for God's word. Click that donate button and prayerfully give us the Lord may lead. I'm out of time. I'll see you next time right here on Scripture Verse by Verse. So long, everyone.